Good morning and welcome to CMC Markets on Friday the 8th of November and this quick look at the week ahead beginning the 11th of November. And it's been a fairly solid week of gains for global equity markets against a backdrop of a vast improvement in investor sentiment, risk appetite and the prospects that we could well see a resolution and a thaw in US-China trade relations. Now I would add a caveat here. There is, We have been here before. Um, certainly in the course of the past few months we've been there's been talk of we're 90 percent there on a deal only for talks to break down and both sides retreat to the sidelines and i think this is one of the major imponderables as we head towards year end um, there is the prospect that we could see um, the rolling back of tariffs. Do I think that's likely in the short term? If I'm honest, I've got to say I don't. But what we could see is a delay to the December tariffs that are due to kick in on December the 15th. And that'll be a start. And I think more than anything, you know, if we don't get a significant escalation from where we are now and we do get a suspension of the tariffs that are due to kick on the 15th of December, I think that will be a start. And that's helped push the S&P 500 and the Dow to new record highs this week. It's pushed the DAX even higher to multi-month highs, its highest highest levels since the summer of 2018, with the prospect that we could actually see more gains to come. Now, why do I say that? Well, essentially, it's all about price action, what the price action is doing. We talked about last week the break above 3,030 in the S&P 500 and the prospect that that could signal further gains. And it's certainly done that. We can see that from this chart here. The break of these highs was an arbiter, a potential arbiter for further gains. We did come back and retest that. We have since broken higher and continued to push higher. So even though the market continues to look very overbought, that doesn't necessarily mean that it can't go even higher. It really depends on how the uh, detente that appears to be currently encouraging markets to push higher continues into the new week. If we look at the Germany 30 or the DAX, last week I talked about the prospect that we could well see further gains because of the breakout of this consolidation pattern here. Um, we've tested and broken through the 61.8 um, projection higher with the prospect that really we could actually go to 13,680 over the course of the next few days and weeks. Here again, it's all about momentum. Momentum is positive until such times as we get a move back below 12,800. This level here, which is where you've got this very long shadow. Let me just zoom it in for you on this candle here. Then the likelihood is we'll probably continue to see further very incremental gains. I don't think we're going to go surging higher, but certainly unless the risk environment deteriorates markedly, the prospect of further equity market gains um, certainly does appear to be leaning towards a slow grind higher. We've certainly seen that reflected in bond markets. Bond yields have shot higher um, as people have sold out of government bonds and rotated capital back into equity markets. And we've seen it in gold prices as well. Let's look at gold because we've seen a significant breakdown here. What we haven't as yet seen is a significant break below these previous lows from the beginning of the month. And this is really, I think, the next key level when it comes to the gold price. If we get a significant thrust below the lows that we saw at the beginning of the month, around about 1460, 1459, then the likelihood is we could well um, extend down towards this series of lows around about the 14. 10 area 1420 area where we also have the 200 day moving average it's also notable that the 50 day moving average is starting to roll over and go slightly negative so momentum is certainly fading on gold the dollar is getting stronger and the reason the dollar is getting stronger is because the prospect of further fed easing has retreated it's likely that the fed will be on pause for quite some time to come unless obviously the data deteriorates markedly over the course 
of the next few days and weeks. And more importantly, when it comes to looking at the outlook for risk, the prospect of auto tariffs on EU exports to the US has also retreated um, as um, talk that Wilbur Ross suggested that the pres President Trump wasn't minded to start implementing tariffs on EU automotive vehicles quite yet. And I think there's an element of politics going on here at the moment. Pr Trump is now approaching the final leg towards potential re-election in November next year. And I think it's in his interests um, that he doesn't do anything to derail the resilience of the US economy and certainly extra tariffs on EU goods and services will definitely do that. So slightly more positive. The outlook is much more positive as we head into year end. The year end generally tends to be fairly positive last year notwithstanding for stock markets and certainly in terms of the price action that we've seen here ladies and gentlemen. Um, at the moment the trend is your friend and when you're looking at the trend and you're looking at the FTSE 100 the FTSE 100 is significantly underperformed the DAX the CAC 40 the S&P and the Dow but we do still have to make particular note of this particular peak around about here 7430 if we're able to break through that 7430 area on the FTSE 100 we could also extend higher here but at the moment we're playing the range on that um, with a slightly upward bias we can draw a trend line through these lows here can draw that in there and that roughly comes in around about to where we have the confluence of the 50 and the 200 day moving average there so all told what are we looking for looking forward to next week well we've got a host of uk data coming out next week we've got third quarter GDP economic activity is unlikely to have picked up significantly since the 0.2% contraction we saw in Q2. We've got a slightly more dovish Bank of England. We've had James Haskell, Michael Saunders vote for a rate cut. What's possessed them to change their position on that is anybody's guess because we've certainly seen an improvement on what we've seen in Q2. They have suggested that perhaps the unemployment rate could be on the cusp of ticking up and certainly I think when we look at the unemployment numbers on the 12th we could well see a slight uptick there but you know I don't think that suggests that we're on the turning point of a significant increase in the unemployment rate. I'm more interested in the wages numbers which still are fairly resilient around about just under 4% on a rolling three month basis and unemployment let's not forget even if it has ticked up a little is still near 40 year lows so I think when you look at an inflation rate that is still below the general average of 2% the Bank of England target rate and an economy that has actually shown signs of picking up in Q3 I think those two Bank of England policy makers are being a little bit premature and let's face it when rates are as low as they are what does a 25 basis point rate cut do to change the overall risk outlook and boost consumer sentiment? I would argue not that much, given the fact that we're in the, we're in the middle of a UK election campaign, which is likely to get nastier and nastier as we head up to polling day. And we certainly, it's certainly going to dominate the news cycle. We've had the incredible spectacle this week of former Labour MPs publicly lambasting Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn has been completely unsuitable to be UK Prime Minister. So the big question there will be whether or not that gets any cut through in Labour's polling numbers. Because if Labour's polling numbers start to decline from where they already are, then obviously that could be construed as sterling positive as it makes a Labour administration um, that much less likely but again with with opinion polls you've still got to be very very careful about over interpreting them looking at the pound we've seen a bit of a decline this week um, a large part of that's been down to a stronger dollar against the euro it's largely traded sideways haven't really seen too much of a decline there but what we have seen on this chart here is we were seeing slowly weaker highs and if we break below 
the lows of around about 127.80, we could actually see a move back towards 126 over the course of the next few days and weeks. And I think that's largely going to be as a result of a stronger dollar as opposed to a weaker pound. Um, we've also got German third quarter GDP coming out on the 14th of November. Um, certainly the recent glide path for economic data in Germany has been disappointing. Uh, recent trade data shows that there was a bit of an improvement in September, but I would still expect to see a contraction in the German economy in Q3. Um, and that's certainly being reflected in the way the euros performed over the course of the past few days. Couldn't get back through the 200-day moving average, starting to trend back lower, and could well see a move back towards 110 and the previous lows of around about 108.80 over the course of the next few days and weeks. Certainly projecting a slightly stronger dollar on the back of that. Also got China retail sales and industrial production um, on the 14th of September as well. Certainly recent data from China appears to be showing early signs of a pickup in economic activity. The recent trade data was slightly better than expected, though it's certainly, there's, you know, the Chinese economy is certainly not ripping up any trees at the moment, but the recent Kaishin manufacturing PMI numbers showed their best readings since March 2017, and it was also the third monthly expansion in succession. So we may see an improvement there, um, which could also help boost risk appetite. In terms of the earnings picture, we've got third quarter earnings from ITV. Um, they've in the process of launching a brand new streaming service alongside the BBC called BritBox. I really, uh, I really don't buy into this BritBox thing. I don't think it's really going to get any cut through. As we can see here from this particular chart, if you look at these series of highs for ITV, we've got big, big resistance at 140. I certainly won't be buying BritBox. Most of what, most of the content that you can get on this Brit, BritBox service is already freely available on any Sky subscription, Virgin subscription, or any or, or anything like that, or even to some extent in Freeview. So why pay for something twice? I really don't. You know, I don't. I don't I just just don't get it. So certainly think there's limited scope for further gains in ITV shares. We've also got the latest numbers from Burberry where we could see what we could we could we could find out whether or how much um how much of effect that uh, burberry's um sales numbers have been affected uh by the recent unrest in hong kong if i can actually get my charts to actually work and for some reason i can't get them to work so let me just open a completely separate chart and then hopefully we can see something which is slightly more informative and yep here we are so Burberry shares rebounded from the from lows of around about 18 one pound eight, 18 1854 um, at the moment finding a little bit of resistance just below 2200 um, certainly the luxury sector has been one of those sectors that's been hit by concerns about US China trade as well as the unrest in Hong Kong um, there is some optimism that the new um, chief creative officer, Ricardo Tischi's, easy for me to say, debut at London Fashion Week last year, um, could well translate into some improved sales numbers. But certainly Burberry has been one of the underperformer when it comes to luxury. It's um, up underperformed its peers, LVMH and the like in terms of share price gains this year. So it has some serious catching up to do. And certainly the price action that we've seen today would appear to suggest that maybe we could well see a revisit of those lows that we saw earlier this month. Other numbers to keep an eye out for Cisco Systems, first quarter, NVIDIA, third quarter. And, and if you like your beer, JD Weatherspoon, first quarter numbers on the 13th of November. So that's it for this week. Thank you very much for listening. It's Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.